Hello friends, looking at current affairs for 25th March, the important news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these 16. We'll look at them in detail. The first one, Center seeks banks turnaround plan. So this is a letter going from the finance ministry to 10 public sector banks and they are asking them to provide a time bound turnaround plan. So an MOU has to be signed where they agree to stick to this turnaround plan. Only then government will give further capital infusion means further support assistance because these public sector banks are suffering due to stressed assets. So this has been discussed here. The State Bank of India's SBI's merchant banking arm, SBI CAPS, has been given the authority, it's mandated to vet, means go through each bank's plan. So this is regarding that. Even bad loans have increased significantly following the RBI's asset quality review, which has been done. So asset quality review was done so that banks can clearly identify you know which loans are bad loans otherwise banks even try to hide them so this asset quality review has resulted in bad loans being coming out in the open now further so that's that rbi wants to clean up banks balance sheet so first they have to be identified so that is why this asset quality review was undertaken and in its financial stability report rbi has said that banks may remain risk averse in the near future as they clean up their balance sheets and their capital positions may remain insufficient to support higher credit growth. So this problem is not going to go off quickly because even they will be risk covers. They will not be giving credit so easily. So that's why there will be insufficient support for higher credit growth presently from these banks because they will try to clean up their balance sheets, you know, shore up their capital positions. So that's been stated. And you can see non-performing assets of commercial banks increased to 9.1% of their gross advances as of September 2016 compared to 5.1% a year earlier. So this large shooting up is because of asset quality review. In 2015, government came up with this plan, Indra Dhanush plan, you should know, like the rainbow, it has seven provisions. So this also had one provision that government will provide capital infusion. So 70,000 crore as such in four years, 25, 25 in first two years and next two years will be 10 crores. 10,000 crores each. So this plan has also been noted under the Indra Dhanush scheme. So this will be implemented means capital infusion will be done only if turnaround plan is in place. So this is shown here you can see so this is net non-performing assets, gross net non-performing assets and stressed assets. So stressed assets is what is defined here you can see asset in gross NPA plus standard restructured advances plus written off accounts. What does this mean? So there's a difference between stressed assets and NPS. So you can see this is stressed assets is gross NPS. NPA means non-performing assets plus restructured loans also and written off assets. So what are these non-performing assets? We know if a borrower does not pay the interest or the principal amount for say 90 days, then it is declared as non-performing assets. It's 90 days only in India. Then restructured asset means that if you have restructured this non-performing assets, means you have extended the repayment period, means banks do this and reduce the interest rate or convert a part of the loan into equity, etc. Then it is a restructured asset. So they, it may not be non-performing presently, but it was non-performing and has been restructured. So in stress assets, those are also added. Plus third is written off assets. So written off assets are those money which you know, the financial statement of the bank, they write off those loans. So they try to compensate for them through some other means. It does not mean that the borrower has been pardoned. He, should, he did not pay the payment. But for the bank's financial statement, this has been written. So those return of assets are also part of stressed assets only. So all three added together give you the idea of stressed assets. So this is important. And this is regarding the seven point agenda, the Indra Dhanush plan regarding appointments, banks board bureau, which has been uh, you know, established. It's headed presently by a former CAG, Vinod Rai. So you should know about all these steps. This is regarding the capitalization, which we just discussed. Then the next news item is Uttarakhand summer capital back on agenda. So Uttarakhand saw the new government form, BJP government is in place. And the first state assembly session, the plan for development of Uttarakhand, including Gersen. So this Gersen is in Chamoli district in the hilly region. They have said that it will be declared as the state summer capital. The capital of Uttarakhand is Dehradun. Uttarakhand was formed as a state in a separate state out of Uttar Pradesh in 2000, the year 2000. So at that time, the demand for a separate state was made because this region was neglected. So for the development of this hilly state here, this demand was made. But the capital Dehradun is in the plains. 
so what they wanted is that gersen which is in the hilly region representing the hills should become the capital so this is regarding that so uttarakhand movement agitators means last 16 years they have been demanding gersen to be the capital the previous government congress government rawat government had also initiated and they have built the uh, state vidhan sabha building in this uh, gersen they are also working on building the secretariat so that's why now bjp government has also stated that they will declare it as the summer capital of uttarakhand then the next news item is fortify democracy against hate speech so this is the law commission of india's 267th report in which it says that hate speech should be a criminal offense a criminal law amendment bill 2017 a law, draft law has been made by it so that this provisions for action being taken against hate speech is put into it so supreme court in 2014 had referred to the law commission that you know there should there should be a way that how election commission can crack down on hate speeches so this means how this should be done it has proposed this amendment bill so this is the law commission report it is headed by former supreme court judge justice balbir singh chauhan so hate speech means what a potential which has the potential to provoke individuals and society to commit acts of terrorism genocide and ethnic cleansing against you know people or marginalized people having a particular religious belief sexual orientation gender etc so this is hate speech so uh, action should be taken and a law proposed here then the next news item is Supreme Court to probe closure of 199 anti-Sikh riot cases. So these anti-Sikh riots, which took place post the assassination of Prime Minister Indira Gandhi in 1984, when her Sikh bodyguard assassinated her, the anti-Sikh riots, majorly in Delhi and all the surrounding regions here, it resulted in huge number of deaths. And people who have been uh, cases filed here, many of them they were referred to the special investigation team. Actually, the government appointed a special investigation team. And, and they had to look into these cases, but this SIT has not completed, has not, you know, completed the investigation also. And now Supreme Court is calling for the complete records because many cases were closed also. Around 199 cases were closed out of around the number 293 total cases which were given to SIT, Special Investigation Team. So this is being revived now. So we'll see what steps will be taken, what action would be taken further on this. Many congressmen were also involved in these anti-Sikh riots. The next is drug resistant TB a concern. So this is regarding World Tuberculosis Day on 24th March as it is uh, you know, identified. And tuberculosis we have been discussing with respect to India, how India has a huge burden of TB and we plan to eliminate it by 2025. It is a bacterial disease caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. It's contagious, infectious, but it does not spread easy just by con touch or something but yeah for prolonged time if you are in contact with a per person suffering from tb then it would affect you as well it attacks the lungs then in uh, worst cases also the brain and the spine may be affected and the world health organization has recommended for drug resistant tb because this is another concern that it's not just tb is a concern but many forms of tb develop so drug resistant tb multi drug resistant tb extremely drug resistant tb so this drug resistance is a major concern means then new drugs have to be developed to treat it so that's why for drug resistant tb2 these two new drugs have been recommended by world health organization delamonid and bedaquilin so we have discussed this also quite often now so bedaquilin is available in only six states in the country presently under compassionate access program but delamonid we have not registered for it yet and even supreme court has asked the government to register for it get it under the compassionate access program then the next news item is environment ministry official to chair animal welfare board so animal welfare board of india we have discussed this in news often now it's a statutory body means it's established under the law prevention of cruelty to animals act of 1960. this body is generally headed by experts so this body works under the Union Ministry of Environment, but it presently came in conflict because it was filing cases against Jalikattu, the, the bull taming festival in Tamil Nadu. So this has antagonized the government and now it has declared that this body would be chaired by an Environment Ministry official only. So these experts have been vetted hmm, out. So this is the news here. Then the next news item is 
ICHR to study if Ram Setu is man-made or natural. So this is Ram Setu, also called Adams Bridge. This is a study done by Indian Council of Historical Research. So they will have archaeological exploration done to study this Ram Setu. Ram Setu is here. You can see it's written also. A stretch of limestone shoals running from Pamban Island near Rameshwaram in South India to Mannar Islands near the northeastern coast of Sri Lanka. So you can see. This is Rameshwaram. This is the Pamban Island here. And this in Sri Lanka here. This is the connection. Mannar Island. So this you can see in detail also it's shown here. So this is Pamban Island, Mannar Island of Sri Lanka. This is Adams Bridge, limestone shoals here. So a study is to be done whether this is natural or man-made. Because it is claimed that this is man-made, it was built by Lord Ram. This is the belief of Hindus that it was built by Lord Ram when his army was trying to reach Ravan's kingdom in Sri Lanka and the route here. So they were going to rescue Sita. So this route was made then. Means it is man-made. And others believe that it is and uh, it is natural. So a study will be done. Archaeological study would be done to find out whether it is natural or man. So this is the news. And this is important because there is a plan to build this Setu Samudram shipping canal project. This has been in news for two decades now. So this will cut the travel time for ships. So this project has been opposed because it will result in dredging, digging here, which will affect the Ram Setu. So it's considered as holy, so it can should not be dredged. And also environmentally suppose it that this dredging should not take place. It will affect the environment and the fisheries here as such. Because ships would also pass through in this region then. So this is the project. Because presently the ships go through this route. They go encircling Sri Lanka. Because there is not enough space here to go through. But if the dredging is done, it would result in ships going through this route, which will, up, which will reduce significantly the time and cost. But this project has not been given a go-ahead because of these concerns by Hindu groups and environmentalists. So that's why Adam's Bridge, knowing about it, Ram Setu is important. Then the next news item is INS Vikramaditya fires surface-to-air missile. So this is regarding INS Vikramaditya. So it has joined the Navy three years ago. We have seen already INS Virat. It is what has to be done with it. We have discussed Andhra Pradesh proposal was rejected. So that was also the aircraft carrier of India, now decommissioned. And this is presently the sole aircraft carrier. Even before Virat, INS Vikrant has been decommissioned. It went to the scrapyard. We don't want Virat to go to the scrapyard. So that we all have discussed. Now this is INS Vikramaditya. You should know about it. It conducted its first maiden test. So this is the newly installed Barak short-range surface-to-air missile, which was successfully tested. But then the originally what was required was it should have a long range, not short range of a square missile. But that is under joint development with Israel. So these Barak missiles, we are jointly developing. They are actually being procured. So there is no technology transfer also being done. So that is also a criticism with respect to these Barak missiles. So this actually has been delayed. Means it has been commissioned, but the missile which was, should have been with it has not come uh, forth yet. So this is also about Vikramaditya that it does not have its long range surface to air missile system with it till date. And the short range missile newly installed has been successfully test fired. So this is Vikramaditya, the aircraft carrier, the sole only aircraft carrier with India presently. Then the next news item is UN to probe Myanmar crimes. So UN Human Rights Council has adopted a resolution without a vote that it, it was brought by European Union and other countries like USA supported it. So it calls for ensuring full accountability for perpetrators and justice for victims. So this is victims here, Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar in Rakhine state here. So they have been in news quite often. They are persecuted. They are not considered as Myanmar inhabitants. Their citizenship has been taken away from them. Even Sitwe port here lies here, which India is building in Rakhine state, you should see. So they have fleed from persecution here in Bangladesh and adjoining down other states also. So this uh, now UN Human Rights Council will do a study on that. A report would be prepared. This is CIA has tools to spy on Mac computers. CIA, Central Investigation Agency, foreign, which gathers foreign intelligence for USA. So this is a US agency which has... Develop tools to spy Mac computers. These are Apple, Mac, iPhone and I, uh, iPads also. They can spy. This is by injecting a software into the chips that controls the computer's fundamental operations. So this is information coming out from classified government documents which have been presently released by WikiLeaks. So this is an organization which brings all such uh, 
information about government functioning out in the open. So these classified documents means they should be secret documents. So they have come out. So that's what it is. Apple has also said that Mac vulnerabilities described in this disclosure have been fixed for all Macs launched after 2013. But then there are recent reports that too, that new version of this tool are also being developed by CI. So this is a concern. It says CI has found ways to hack Apple iPhones, Android smartphones, Microsoft Windows computers, Samsung smart television, Cisco routers, etc. So this is a concern because CIA wants to do this because it wants to tap all the people so this is not just us citizens but globally they can be people can be tapped and they wanted to have a tab on the activities of even justification for controlling you know terrorism but privacy concerns are also here and these companies are also involved so they will take action against ensuring that such leaks or such spying cannot take place because this is not officially done this is unofficially spying being done so that is this the next news item is Aadhaar now needed for mobile connection. So this is a notification coming from Department of Telecommunication that all phone service providers have to get the details of Aadhaar. Means linking of Aadhaar means eKYC has to be based on Aadhaar only for all mobile subscribers. So all telephone subscribers, they have to re-verify the details. Means all around 100 crore mobile phone subscribers in the country will have to have this done 90% of them are prepaid card users so this is the proposal here so of course it has said that it should not lead to inconvenience to the public and long public queues for this re-verification so the timeline as such has not been mentioned so this is the you know, suggestion coming forth it's actually a notification coming forth it was suggested by Telecom Regulatory Authority of India that this recommendation that Aadhaar based eKYC for verification of existing mobile phone subscribers should be there. It has been approved by the courts too. The Supreme Court has also approved it and now you can see Supreme Court order also came. It approved the government's plan. Now this notification has come that re-verification through Aadhaar based eKYC is required for mobile subscribers. Then next, this is SEBI slaps RIL with Rs. 447 crore disgorgement order over RPL. So this is Reliance Industries Limited which has been, you know, has a disgorgement order against it means it is fine because on charges of insider trading in Reliance Petroleum Limited in 2007. Also this has to be paid along with an interest of 12% per annum from 2007 till the date of payment. So this also it has barred Reliance Industries Limited and all, all 12 other entities from dealing directly or indirectly in the equity derivatives market for a period of one year from the date of the order. So this is the order as such, punishment as such you can say okay, on RIL and why this has been done because in 2007 RIL decided to raise resources by selling about 5% of its holdings in RPL. So when this raising of resources was done, the trade in cash and derivative segment was done in such a way that the price in the cash segment and then the derivative segment can also be brought down. So this which will result in them making extraordinary profits. So this was the insider trading which is alleged and because of which IRL has been imposed with this fine. Then again a regulatory body. Regulatory bodies are important. It's part of GS2. So this is regarding Competition Commission of India. So now it has imposed a penalty of 591 crores upon Coal India Limited because it has found that Coal India Limited and its subsidiaries were violating the Competition Act because it was imposing unfair and discriminatory conditions in fuel supply agreements. So power producers, whether they were in public sector or in private sector, so based on how, whether they were old or new. So this was the discrimination being done. So it says that it has to ensure uniformity. It cannot discriminate on such grounds. And that's why this order has come forth. It's actually a second order now. The earlier order, it had imposed a penalty of 1,773.05 crores. And then the Coal India Limited went to Competition Appellate Tribunal, means appealing against this original order of Competition Commission. It's an appeal tribunal. So here again, it has been referred back, and now CCI has said that it would have to, have to pay a fine of 591 crores. So this is regarding Competition Commission of India. It has recently become fully functional in 2009, and it was established under Competition Act of 2002 and 2003, but did not become fully functional then. Then the next news item is two-third of cancers caused by random genetic typos study. So this is a study which says that two-third, 
means a majority huge majority of cancers are caused because when cell divisions take place and the dna has to be copied into these divided cells there are typo errors typo errors means typographic errors we see in typing there are sometimes spelling mistakes etc so in this copying there are typo errors random genetic typos which cause cancer so this is a new study coming forth then the next news item is gravitational waves kick out black hole from galactic core so this is nasa's hubble space telescope which has detected a supermassive black hole that was kicked out of the center of a distant galaxy so how could a black hole supermassive black hole be kicked out so it says that this could be through gravitational waves power only because when two black holes merge these gravitational waves are you know emerge out of it so these gravitational waves must be the cause most plausible explanation that how so much of energy has been uh, emitted that a monster object a supermassive black hole was kicked out so gravitational waves you should know we have discussed this earlier too they were first predicted by albert einstein so these are ripples in space space time actually so when two massive objects collide gravitational waves are formed so you can see we can you know stretch and such you know that such consequences of these are there on space time then the next news item is light pollution another reason to flip the switch off so this is the last news item so light pollution now this is a new thing so earth eye is celebrated every year on 25th march so this year too it has been celebrated so action needs to be taken against climate change is a concern here so you know earth eye it's actually light being switched off for an hour as such in the so this is there plus at night time of course it is and it says that light pollution is a concern means at night time when artificial light is brought in it results in disturbances to animals as well as humans it affects the health so reproductive cycles of some animals migratory birds are affected it disorient night flying insects also even human circadian rhythm that regulate the hormones and other bodily functions is also affected because of too much of light at night sleep patterns are affected etc so this is called light pollution now so the negative impacts on health and well being are there so this has to be taken care of also it's speaking against led too so led is actually promoted because it results in lessening greenhouse emissions fighting against global warming cutting fuel fossil fuel burning for electricity etc but it says that led lights are harmful because they have five times greater impact on circadian sleep rhythms than conventional street lamps so even in street lighting when led lights are used they will have consequences on the health so that is highlighted so these are the news items here it is detailed out to what is light pollution and the impacts as such various aspects to it so that is it thank you